hey, if you've got an RV and you boondock, meaning you've got to supply your own power, take care of your own water, etc., you need lithium batteries. We found this out the hard way, and I'm going to tell you why and what the advantage is right after this. Okay, we're out here in Quartzsite, Arizona. We're spending the winter out here snowbirding. We've been here since late October. It's now January. We'll be leaving in about March. Well, this whole time we're without water, electricity, and sewer. So we have learned a lot about how we need electricity. And electric has been one of the toughest one. I'll show you in this picture here, what we ended up doing was putting a bunch of temporary solar up. This RV is a brand new 2023 Grand Design 315 RLTS, and it comes with 370 watts of solar up on the roof. I'll show you a picture of that too. But that may sound like a lot to some of you, but honestly, all it is was enough to top off the batteries during the day and keep our 12 volt fridge running. We have a 12 volt only, so we have to have 12 volt all the time and that thing never uses propane or anything else. So it needs a fair amount of 12 volt and it needs it all day long. So they, I think that's the main reason they put that up there. But the problem was we got out here and within the first week or two, it started cooling off. It gets down to like 45 at night and it cooled off and our heater was running like it should. And about 4 a.m. it quit. And I got up and looked and it said low, which meant that the battery voltage went too low. We hadn't done anything else. We didn't have an inverter at that time. We couldn't use 110 if we wanted to, except when we're running our generator. Now we do have a generator, so we run that at night, but it, the cutoff hours is 10 o'clock. After that, we had to just not watch TV or use any 110 appliance type things. So we really weren't using much uh, 110 volt power at all. So I realized right off the bat, we didn't have enough battery. So I looked, well, our dealer had put two 85 amp hour batteries on here, which sounds like 170 watts, right? Well, with lead acid, it's not. Two 85 amp hour batteries is only 85 amp hours. And I'll tell you why. It's because with lead acid, you should only draw them down to no more than 50% of the state of charge, meaning 100% state of charge, you should go no lower than 50%. So you effectively only have half of that total output. And we realized we needed more amp hours basically out of our battery. So I did some research and I found out that lithium batteries can go down to 20% and even 10% or lower. Uh, most of them, like the one we bought, can go to zero, but you need to recharge it fairly soon. So by being able to take, say, a 100 amp hour battery, let's say we took a battery that was the same as these, and we, we had 170 uh, amp hours of capacity, we would literally have the full 170 amp hours of capacity with a lithium. So you get more power out of the same amp hours. That's advantage number one, and that's a huge one. It's like doubling but you are going to pay a lot. That's the disadvantage. I'll get to that in a second. Advantage number two is lithium weighs a lot less. It's like half as much as lead acid. And you know, batteries get heavy. So it's not only an advantage for handling it, it's not as heavy to move around and work with. It's also an advantage because in an RV, weight is critical. We're maxed out on weight here because you wanna take your lawn chairs and everything that you want to spend six months, like we are boondocking, griddles, all those kind of things, they add up way faster than you think. So reducing weight in the batteries is a good thing. Another advantage to the high quality batteries, like what we're using here is a Discover lithium battery. I went with these guys because I looked at a few of them and I felt like these were one of the premium brands. There's a few out there, but these are sold here in the US. They're not a purely Chinese brand and they're just better constructed. The internals on them is one of the highest quality there is. And lithium batteries have what's called a battery management system, a BMS. Not quite the same as a regular BM. This is better. It's a battery management system. It actually means in the top of that lid is a little plate of electronics. 
this electronics monitors everything and it helps prevent your battery from getting overcharged, undercharged, it protects it basically. So if you draw it down to like 0%, it will shut it off before it goes to a totally discharged state where you can't bring it back. Once you go too deep with a lithium, it's irreversibly damaged. The BMS is a really good function. It, it helps protect it. It also gives you an app on ours. And you can look at this app and tell what the voltage is, the state of charge, how much it's charging or discharging, and even the temperature of the battery. Now, why is that important? Well, with all batteries, they don't charge as well when they're cold. With lithium, there's a certain temperature you shouldn't try to charge it at when it gets too cold and same with too high. And that's one reason we put our lithium battery inside our storage bay here because it's climate controlled. It will never get too cold. It could get too hot, but we've watched it for a, a month or two now and it has never gotten more than I think 82 degrees or something. I usually open this door up when I'm charging in daytime, like we're solar charging right now, just to make sure it gets enough air in there. But there's a solar charge controller in there, the battery and an inverter, and it's never gotten too hot. So the BMS is really a good protective function of a battery, it's really important. But another advantage to lithium is as it goes down, with a lead acid battery, the voltage keeps dropping and that's why we got the low signal. It dropped to where the voltage was too low and it shut off the heater to protect both the battery and the fact that it needed a certain voltage to run. With lithium, you never get really low voltage. It always stays around 11.6 or higher. It's usually around 13.6, I believe. I could look at it right now and tell you some facts about it and it doesn't take long it's a bluetooth connection so we're currently at a 77 percent state of charge we're getting 22 amps of charging that's the balance it's telling you if there's something drawing like if we turned on a 10 amp draw right now this would show 10 amps versus 20 so it's showing you that balance is there uh, more going in than there is coming out. In this case, there is because we're getting about 60 amps of charging over here. Plus, I'm charging an EcoFlow battery inside here. It's at 13.4 volts. It's 23 degrees centigrade, or you can just tap it and see 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's another advantage that, that's really handy. These things also have a really high amperage output. I can put out 150 amps of power on this battery, which is a lot. And if we hook up two of them, we can get 300. We can start to run air conditioners, things like that. In a separate video, I'll go over things like how long can you run an air conditioner on a battery, et cetera, because that's a whole different subject. We could run an air conditioner probably on this battery, but it might be iffy and it would probably only run about 15 or 20 minutes. So we're gonna add more batteries soon to increase that amp hour capacity and, and allow us to run even more. Now you may have heard about the dangers of lithium. Lithium can catch on fire and it burns dramatically. And that's true, but modern day lithium technology, they have stabilized it a lot more. It's a lot harder to get it to catch on fire. It's a lot safer with this battery management. That's another advantage is it protects you from overheating, overcharging, and even overcurrent. We have a few times tried to draw too much power out of this by accident forgetting that we're on generator on this power versus generator power etc it happens well when you do that this thing senses that it hits 150 amps or so it shuts it off it takes about 10 seconds it resets itself it all comes back really really slick the way it works. Now, another benefit to Discover Lithium is the company. I did have one little issue with this battery and it was something they'd never heard of and they handled it just as professionally as I would expect. I am very happy with them, which is why I decided to put out a video about these Discover Lithium batteries. This is the Discover Blue. It's kind of their top of the line. So here's the con to lithium, if you will. It's not really, but it might seem like it. It's the cost. To get this 200 amp hour battery cost us close to $2,000. But look at it like this. An average lead acid battery only lasts a few years. If you draw them down below 12 volts, even once, you start damaging it. You do it a few times, you might only get six months out of it. You might get a year. 
I'd say in an RV, an average is just a couple of years. This thing will last for years. I believe it has a five years warranty on it. I'll put that on screen here, but it has a really good warranty because they don't let themselves get hurt so easily. They're rated at many, many cycles of recharge. I'll put all that information on the screen. I don't have it in the top of my head. So here's some of the specs about this battery, but it can take being discharged and recharged fully many, many times. It's fine with a partial state of charge. If you've got 80% charge, it doesn't hurt it to top it off. So hey, I hope that helped you out with lithium batteries. If it did, I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and that way I can see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.